Are you looking to make amazing CSS animations? Maybe just center an object? Or maybe you just want to understand what the heck transform does? If so, this is the perfect video for you because I'm going to be covering every single aspect of the transform property in CSS so you're going to know exactly what's going on. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now transforms are going to be most commonly used inside of animations and that's because the transform property is incredibly performant to animate and allows you to do tons of things from moving an element to scaling it to making it rotate and other things on top of that. So if you're interested in using this in the form of animations, I highly recommend checking out my full animation crash course after you're done watching this video to really learn how you can also start writing cool animations. But in this video, we're specifically going to stick to just the transform property because on its own, it's really complex and a lot to understand. Now to get started, I have a really basic div with a bunch of just default styles. We're going to kind of ignore this for now. It just gives us a div with a box on our screen we can play with. And then we're going to write all of our transform styles inside this other div selector here. And to do a transform, you just type out the word transform, just like that. And now inside of here, you can actually specify a bunch of different functions which do different things. And the first function I want to talk about is probably the easiest to understand, and that is going to be the rotate function. As you can see, there are essentially five different variants of rotate. There's just plain rotate, there's rotate 3D, then there's the X, Y, and Z variation of this. This is something that you're going to see really common with a lot of different transform functions is they're going to have a 2D version, they're going to have a 3D version, then they're going to have an X, Y, and Z version for specifically dealing with those one little axis at a time. Generally, you're going to only work with the 2D version, but sometimes you may want to work with the 3D version or just one axis at a time. In our case with rotate, it's just easiest to work with the two-dimensional version of just the rotate function. And in here, all you do is you pass in a value of degrees or turns or whatever you want. So we could say we're going to rotate this by 74 degrees. And now if we click save, you can see the box has been rotated 74 degrees. It's at an angle now, the text is sideways and so on. You know, we could do 90 degrees to get it perfectly, you know, rotated by one quarter. Or you can use something called turns. We could say 0.75 turn, and that's going to rotate by 90 degrees or a quarter turn. And if we save, you can see the box is in the same position. So you can use turns or you can use degrees, whichever one's easiest for you to understand. Now, if you wanted to dive into a 3D rotation, you could use the rotate 3D function like this. This function is actually quite confusing and difficult to use. So I recommend instead just specifying, for example, rotate X or rotate Y or rotate Z individually. And that would be how you rotate in three dimensions. So we could rotate by 0.25 turn. And if we save, you can see it looks like the box disappeared. And that's because we've rotated in the X direction and the box is essentially paper thin against the screen. So if we rotate by, for example, like 0.03 turn, and we save or make it a little bit larger, we'll do 0.13 and save. You can see the box looks like it's getting shorter and that's because it's rotating away from us. So the top is getting further away from us and the bottom of the box is getting closer. As we get closer to that 0.25, you can see the box is getting more and more squished because it's rotating away from us. Same thing with Y, we can change the Y rotation here. We'll start with 0.13 and you can see it looks like the box is getting skinnier. If we go to 0.23, it's again getting skinnier and that's because it's getting further away from us on one side. So the left side is getting further away from us while the right side is getting closer to us or the other way around, depending on which way you're rotating the box. Finally, we have rotate Z and rotate Z works exactly the same as just rotate. So both of those are the same. You don't have to worry about one or the other. Rotate X and Y are the ones that get kind of confusing because that's when you're rotating into the screen or away from the screen. Generally, I don't ever use these, though. I pretty much just use rotate on its own, just like this, to rotate a box on the screen because that's 99% of your use cases. If you're doing some fancy 3D thing, then sure, you can do rotate X or rotate Y as needed. And the next transform function I want to talk about is another pretty easy one to understand, and that is the idea of scale. Scale is just going to allow you to make an object larger or smaller. And again, we have default scale, scale 3D, X, Y, and Z. So with the default scale, if we pass in one single number to it, like 1.5, What's going to happen is it's going to make it 1.5 times bigger in the x and the y direction at the same time. So if you pass it one value, it does both x and y. If you pass it two values though, the first value is going to be x and the second value is going to be y. So in this case, our y is two times bigger than normal and our x is 1.5 times bigger than normal. Or you could make the y 0.5. So now our y is half the size it normally is, but our x dimension is 1.5 times the size it normally is. So we can specify x and y both at the same time by using scale. Or we can use, for example, scale x. We can say we want to scale the x direction by 0.5, or we can do scale y, scale the y direction by 0.5. 
And again, we can do scale Z for three-dimensional stuff, but our box right now is not three-dimensional, so we don't really have to worry about that. And again, that's only useful if you're doing some crazy three-dimensional scaling, which for 99% of the use cases, you're probably not. For the most part, what you just wanna do is just scale 0.5, there you go, our box is half the size it normally is, or we can do scale two, and now it's twice the size it normally is. Now, those are probably the two easiest to understand functions for transform, but by far the most useful is going to be the translate function. And translate allows you to move an object, whether left, right, up, down, or back and forth in the Z direction. So you have again, translate, translate 3D, X, Y, and Z. So by default, we're just gonna start with translate. Let's just say that we're gonna translate by 20 pixels or 30 pixels. And we click save and you'll notice the box moved to the right by 30 pixels. Without this translate, it's right in the middle. And with it, you can see it's been moved to the right by 30 pixels. So translate, if you pass it one value, is the exact same as if you did translate X, because it's translating in the X direction, 30 pixels to the right. If we did negative 30 pixels, it's going to translate 30 pixels to the left. So this is without translate, and this is with translate. It's moved 30 pixels to the left. So we can use positive or negative numbers to move our objects based on a set number of pixels. The Y direction is the same thing, but it's going to be for the Y axis. So we move 30 pixels up, or if we do a positive number, it's going to move the box down by those 30 pixels. Now, if we go back to using the translate function, we can actually pass this two separate parameters. So we can do 30 pixels. We could do like negative 40 pixels. And what this is going to do is move our box to the right, 30 pixels in the X direction, and it's gonna move us up 40 pixels in the Y direction. So the first value you pass is going to be the X direction, and the second value you pass is going to be the Y direction for the translate function. Finally, we have translate Z again, but this isn't really gonna make much difference. I could put a large number in here, and if I remove it and save, you're gonna notice it doesn't look any different, and that's again because we're not dealing with three dimensions here. We just have a two-dimensional object, so moving it back and forth in the Z direction isn't gonna make much difference. Now this may not seem that useful, but the place where translate becomes really powerful is when you start to use percentages. So let's say that we want to translate by 100%. What do you think is going to happen? Well, what happens is it moves the box over by 100% of its own width. If we remove this, you'll notice the right edge of the box is right here where my mouse is. And if I come and put this back, you see the box has moved all the way over 100% of its width. And this is perfect if you want to do centering. So let's say that we just have our div here and we want to add an after element, which has some content that just says after. And we'll say background is red. Let's just save. We'll get rid of this transform here for now. And you can see we have that after content. Well, what I want to do with this after content is I want to center it at the very top of our box. So we can say that the position is going to be absolute, just like that. And here, our position is going to be relative. So now you can see it's centered in the very center of our box. We want to make it centered at the very top. So we can say our top is going to be zero. And to get it centered, we can just say left is going to be 50%. That's going to put the left edge of our box right here in the very center. But we want the center of after to be in the dead center. Now what we need to do is just say transform, translate, and we want to translate negative 50% in the X direction. That's going to move us half of our width over to the left, which as you can see, perfectly centers this after text at the very top of our box. So by using position absolute in combination with left and transform translate negative 50%, we can very easily center things based on their own width. This is something that's really hard to do in CSS without this. So it's perfect that you have these properties available to use this. And this is where 99% of my translate use cases come in. When I need to just perfectly center something, translating by a percentage is the ideal and perfect way to do that. Now, the next property that I wanna talk about for transform is probably the least useful of them, and it's called skew. But then we're gonna dive into right after this, how you can use multiple transforms together really easily and some tips and tricks that you really wanna know. So just make sure you stick through this property, even though it's not quite as useful. So with skew, essentially what you're gonna be doing is stretching out a shape. And again, with skew, we have all the different variants. So we have X and Y, but there is no three-dimensional skew to worry about. So for skew, let's just say that we want to skew by 90 degrees. And if we save, and make this actually something more like 30 degrees, you can see that our box has kind of been stretched and tilted by about 30 degrees off to this side. And that's why we have this kind of weird shape showing up for our box. And this first skew number that you pass is going to be the X direction. It'd be the same thing as if we did skew X. They both look exactly the same. Now skew Y is going to be essentially the same thing, but we're skewing in the Y direction now instead of the X direction. And if you pass two properties to skew, the first one is the X and the second one is the Y. So we'll do 30 and we'll say 40 degrees here for the Y. And let's just make it negative actually. Now you can see we've skewed our box in X and Y direction by 30 degrees and 40 degrees negative respectively. Now, unlike all of the other transform properties, I don't really have very many use cases for skew, but when you need it, it's the perfect one for that scenario. And the next thing I wanna talk about is combining together multiple transforms, because as you can see, we've done certain things, you know, like 
rotate, you know, 30 degrees or whatever. But we haven't combined multiple properties together. And the way that you do that inside of CSS is just put them all on the same transform. So we'll say rotate 30 degrees and we'll say scale of 0.75. So now we have a rotated and scaled box that is using these two different properties. We can combine together as many of these as we want. For example, you know, I could say scale X by 7.75. I could say translate Y by negative 10 pixels and save. And now our box has been scaled. It's been moved. It's been rotated and all these other things. Now where the difficulty comes is when you want to override a transform because a transform is one property. So if you override it, you need to redefine everything inside that property. You can't just override one part of it. You have to override all of it or none of it. So let's say by default, we're going to have a box that's going to have a scale of 1.2 and it's gonna be translated in the X direction by five pixels. Let's just actually make it 50 pixels. So by default, this is what our box is going to look like. And then let's just say that we're going to have a class called dot big and dot big is going to make our scale larger. So our scale is going to be two. Now you may think that's all we need to do. And if we come in here and we say class of big, you're gonna notice something interesting. It did scale, but our box is no longer translated by 50 pixels anymore. We need to make sure we write that translate X of 50 pixels back into here to make sure our box is translated and scaled correctly. Same thing if we have a class called move that's just going to move our box. What we can do is we can say that the translate is gonna swap here. So for our transform, oops, transform, what we wanna make sure that we do is have our translate for the X direction be negative 50 pixels this time. And if we change our class here from big to move, you're gonna notice our box is moved to the correct direction, but it now lost that scaling of 1.2. We need to make sure we put that scale of 1.2 back into there. And then finally, what if we combine together dot big and dot move? Well, if we come down here and we try that out, you're gonna notice our box only has the classes for dot move. It doesn't have any of our dot big. We need to come in here. We need to make sure that our transform has the scale of two and it has the proper translate X of negative 50 pixels. And now it's going to have all of the different properties we need. But you'll notice this is a real pain to work with. We've repeated this scale 1.2 and this translate negative 50 pixels all over the place. And if we have like three or four different properties we can define, the amount of different CSS classes we need to define is going to become astronomical. So doing your code this way is really painful, but it used to be the only way to do this until we got CSS variables. CSS variables make this incredibly easy to work with though. So if you're unfamiliar with CSS variables, I recommend checking out my video on them, linked in the cards and description first, and then dive into this. What we wanna do is take our scale here and we want to use a CSS variable for our scale. We'll just call it scale. And by default, we're gonna set this to 1.2 if it's not defined. Same thing with translate X. We want to use a variable, which we're just gonna call translate X. And by default, we're gonna use that 50 pixel value if we don't define it. So now, if we get rid of the big and the move class, you're gonna notice our box looks exactly like it did before it's in the right place with the right scale. But down here where we have our big class, instead of redefining our transform, we're just gonna redefine this scale variable and set it to two. And we're not even gonna to touch the transform. And that allows us to change just the scale. It's going to get inserted into the variable here without messing with anything else. So now if I put my big class on there, you're gonna notice it still is in the correct position and it got twice as big. Now for move, again, we're just gonna change that translate X property, we're gonna change it to negative 50 pixels. And now if I put the class of move on here, you're gonna notice it moved off to the left, but the scaling is still there. Now for big and move, we don't even need that. We can completely get rid of it. And that's because big and move already take care of the scale in the translate X. If I put the big class on here as well, we now have a big box that's also moved in the correct location. And as you can see, our CSS is really easy to read, really easy to write. And if we need to add something else, for example, we needed to add a skew into here, but we could just say that our skew is going to be, you know, like 50 degrees. And then up here, we would just add in our skew with a variable for that skew. And let's just default it to 10 degrees, for example. And now we also have this property for skew that's going to work exactly like we want it to. If we come in here and add the skew class, you can see it is a much more skewed box and big and moved all at the same time. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend you check out my full CSS course, which has an entire section dedicated specifically to animations, so you can really master this tricky section of CSS. If you're interested, I'll link that down in the description below for you. Also, with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.